Good day everyone. Today we are going to discuss about compounding more than once a year. The objectives for this lesson are first, compute maturity value, interest and present value. The second one is to solve problems involving compound interest when compound interest is computed more than once a year. Okay, before discussing compounding more than once a year, let us first have this example as a review. Given a principal of 10,000 pesos, which of the following options will yield greater interest after five years? Okay, the first option is to earn an annual interest rate of 2% at the end of the year or B earn an annual interest rate of 2% in two portions, 1% after six months and 1% after another six months. This is both a review and a comparison for compounding annually versus compounding more than once a year. Now let's first have a solution of option A where interest is compounded annually. So we have here the table, we have here the time that is presented in years, we have the principal that is 10,000 pesos, annual interest rate of 2%, and also in this column, we will present the amount at the end of the year. So now let's first, let's first have the first year. So we have the principal 10,000 times 1.02, that is 10,200 pesos. Okay, next, in the second year, from 10,200 pesos times 1.02, that becomes 10,404 pesos. So in the third year, See, 10,404 as the principal is multiplied to 1.02 and that will yield to 10,612.08. In the fourth year, we have 10,612.08 as the principal times 1.02. That will become 10,824.32. And on the final year, which is the fifth year, we have the principal of 10,824.32 times 1.02, that becomes 11,040.81. Again, okay, now let's proceed to the solution of option B, in which it is the interest is compounded semi-annually for every six months. So, we have here the same table, the time in which it is presented in years, the principal, that is 10,000 pesos, annual interest rate of 2%, and amount at the end of the year. But in this table, the, amount, the interest rate 2% is compounded semi-annually. Okay, now let's first have the semi-annual or half year or the first six months so one half of one year we have 10,000 times 1.01 so that will give us 10,100 pesos now on the other half see one half deridungagan of another one half that makes one year para makompleto ang one year and i multiply siya again si 10,100 ari mo na principal i multiply siya of another 1.01 since 1% per 6 months man siya so 1.01 lang so that gives us 10,201 so and thus sa ika nga 6 months or uh, let's say one and a half year. 
We have the principal 10,201 times 1.01. That will yield to 10,303.01. So, si 10,303 mo na po'y bagong principal sa atong ikaduhan na tuig. After 2 years, we will have 10,406.04. Now, let's continue sa sunod sa 2 years. Okay. Same table. So, 2.5 years, we will have 10,406.04 times 1.01. That will give us 10,510.10. Yung 10,510.10, mo na po yung new principal, pag-abot na tag 3 years. So that becomes 10,510.10 times 1.01. That will give us 10,615.20. And 3 and a half years, we will have this principal, atong balance atong 3 years. Mono po yung new principal times 1.01, that is 10,721.35. And on the fourth year, 10,721.35 times 1.01, that is 10,828.56. Now let's continue to our fifth year. So, same solution for option B, same table. So, we have here four and a half years. We have the principal 10,828.56 times 1.01. And that will give us 10,936.85. And on the final and last year, we have here... 10,936.85 as the principal multiplied to 1.01. That will give us 11,046.22. Now let's compare the earnings of option A versus option B. So see si option A is compounded annually while option B is compounded semi-annually. So, si option A, we gained 11,040.81. So, from 10,000 after 5 years, at 2% rate, nahimo siyang 11,040.81. While option B, same principal, 10,000, same interest rate, 2%. At uh, same time, also, 5 years. But this is, Compounded semi-annually, it gives us 11,046.22. Therefore, option B will give the higher interest after 5 years. If all else is equal, a more frequent compounding will result in a higher interest. Which is why option B gives a higher interest than option A. Okay, now let's have a topic overview. The investment scheme in option B introduces new concepts because interest is compounded twice a year. The conversion period is 6 months and the frequency of conversion is 2. As the investment runs for 5 years, the total number of conversion periods is 10. The nominal rate is 2%. And the rate of interest for each conversion period is 1%. Now, these terms are defined generally on the next slide. Now, let's start with the definition. Let's start with the frequency of conversion in symbol that is M. That means it is the number of conver conversion periods in one year. Second one is conversion or interest period. This is the time between successive conversions of interest. Now, the third one is the total number of conversion periods in symbol that is N. And in formula, we have N is equal to 
the frequency of conversion times time in years. So, let's proceed to the fourth one. We have the nominal rate, or in symbol, we have I raised to M. And it means that it is the annual rate of interest. And the last one here, we have the rate of interest for each conversion period, or in symbol, we have J. And the formula for this one is J is equal to I sub M, which is our nominal rate, divided by M, which is our frequency of conversion. Now let's have the formula for maturity value compounding m times a year okay so the formula we have here f is equal to p times the quantity of one plus i sub m over m raised to m times t where f stands for maturity or future value p is the principal I sub M is the nominal rate of interest or annual rate. M is the frequency of conversion. And the T is time or term in years. Let's have example number one. We have here, find the maturity value and the interest of 10,000 pesos is deposited in a bank at 2% compounded quarterly for 5 years. Now, in this statement, nakakumpound ang 10,000 at 2% quarterly. It means, sa isa katuig, there are 4 quarters, so kaupat i-compound ang 10,000 pesos for 5 years. So, we have here the principal, which is 10,000 pesos. I sub 4 is equal to 0 0.02. Why is it 4? Because quarter, there are 4 quarters in a year and the rate is 0 0.02 and the T is 5 years or time and we have here M stands for 4. So, let's find maturity value and the compound interest. Now, for our solution for maturity value, we are going to use this formula. All the events are in here. Next thing that we are going to do is substitute all of them. So, CP is 10,000, copy 1. I sub M is 0 0.02, and our M is 4. And also, 4 times 5, 4 CM, and time is 5. So, nahon tanan ang nasa parenthesis first of solve. Let us First, 0 0.02 divided by 4, that is 0 0.005. And also, 4 times 5 is 20. The next one, it adds 1 and 0 0.005. That becomes 1.005 raised to 20. Now, kaning na sa parenthesis unahon? Si 1.005, it times si yung kaulalingon og ka 20, since the exponent is 20, and that will give us 1.104895577 Now, this one, i-multiply na to ni 10,000, that will give us the future value of 11,048.96. Now, let's look for the compound interest. Si compound interest makita by subtracting the future value and the principal. So we have the future value which is 11,048.96 and the principal is 10,000. So let's subtract this. Then we can have the compound interest which is 1,048.96. So the maturity value is 11,000 and the compound interest is 1,048.96. Now, let's have example number 2. Find the maturity value and interest if 10,000 pesos is deposited in a bank 
a 2% compounded monthly for 5 years. So our given here, we have the principal 10,000. Our I sub 12 is 0 0.02. Why is this 12? Because our interest rate is compounded monthly. And since in a year, na I 12 months, so this is 12. So our time is 5 years and our M is also 12. Now we are going to find for the maturity value and the compound interest. Now in our solution, we are going to follow this formula. And the next step is to substitute all the given, the arrays at the formula, and that becomes 10,000 si principal, copy 1. And plus sign, the I sub M, we have 0 0.02, and our M is 12, and our M here is 12 times time, which is 5. The next step is to divide this one, 0 0.02 divided by 12, that becomes 0 0.00166, and so on, and 12 times 5 is 60. The next step is to add these numbers ang naasulod sa parenthesis that will give us 1.00166 and ang ang next ani is si kaning nasa parenthesis nga number i multiply og ka 60 sa iyang kaugalingon since the exponent is 60 and that will give us 1.10507892 now, this value, i-multiply na to ni 10,000. And that will give us a future or maturity value of 11,050.79. Now, let's solve for the compound interest since we are done looking for the maturity value. The compound interest can be found by subtracting the future value and the principal. So, our future value is 11,050.79 and our principal is 10,000. If you subtract these numbers, this will give us a compound interest of 1,050.79. Therefore, the maturity value is 11,050.79 and the compound interest is 1,050.79. Now let's have the third example. Chris borrows 50,000 pesos and promises to pay the principal and interest at 12% compounded monthly. How much must he repay after 6 years? So we have the given here, the principal, which is 50,000. Our I sub 12 is 0 0.12. Our time is 6 years. And our M here is 12 since the interest rate is compounded monthly and in a year there are 12 months. That's why this is 12. So let us look for the maturity value. Kaya ang iyarang ipangayo is pila ang ibayad ni Chris after 6 years. So we are going to look for the maturity value by following this formula. So ang formula. I-substitute lang na to ang given sa kung unsay na star sa formula. And that becomes 50,000 to principal, copy 1, and the addition symbol, I sub M is 0 0.12, and our M is 12, and also M is 12 in the exponent, and time is 6. So, i-divide na to si 0 0.12 divided by 12, and i-multiply ang exponents. We will have, 0 0.01 and 12 times 6 is 72. So the next step is to add the numbers inside the parentheses that will give us 1.01. Now, see si 1.01 I multiply sa yang self of ika 72 since the exponent is 72. And that will give us 2.047099. 3121001. Now the values inside 
with parentheses, I multiply sa atong principal, which is 50,000. If ma multiply, that will give us a future value of 102,354.97. Therefore, Chris must repay 102,354.97. After six years. Now let's discuss the formula if we are going to find the present value at compound interest. So this is the formula P is equal to F divided by 1 plus 1 raised to M over M raised to M times T. Where F is the maturity or future value. P is the principal, I sub M is the nominal rate of interest or the annual rate, and our M is the frequency of conversion, and the term or time in years is P. Now let's have the fourth example, finding the present value. Find the present value of 50,000 pesos due in four years if money is invested at 12% compounded semi-annually. So the given here, we have the future value which is 50,000 and the I, sub I raised to 2 is 0 0.12 or the annual rate is 0 0.12 and the time is four years. The number of conversions is 2 since it is compounded semi-annually. So, let's find the present value using the formula P is equal to F divided by the quantity 1 plus I raised to M divided by M raised to M times T. So, let's substitute the given values. We have 50,000 as our future value. Our Annual, annual rate is 0 0.12 and the number of conversions is 2. And we have here 2 times the time which is 4. So let's divide 0 0.12 divided by 2 and multiply 2 times 4. So we will have 0 0.06 and 2 times 4 is 8. The next one is 2. Add 1 plus 0 0.06. We will have... 1.06. So, si 1.06, i-multiply ka 8 sa iyang self because our exponent is 8. So, we will have 1.59384807453085308. So, si 50,000, i-divide sa value nga kani. We will have 31,370.63. Therefore, the present value is 31,370.62 pesos. Now, let's have the final example. What is the present value of 25,000 due in 2 years and 6 months if money is worth 10,000, 10% rather, compounded quarterly? So we have the given, our future value is 25,000, our annual rate is 0 0.10, our time is 2.5 years, and our conversion periods is 4. So we are going to find the present value using the formula P is equal to F over the quantity of 1 plus i raised to m divided by m raised to m times t. Now, we are going to substitute all the given in the formula. We will have this one. So, our next buhaton, si 0 0.10, i divide of 4, and si 4, i times the 2.5, and that will give us 0 0.025, and 4 times 2.5 is 10. The next one is to add the numbers inside the parentheses. So we will have 1.025 and the 1.025 we multiply na to ika 10 sa iyang self because our 10 is the exponent and to eliminate also the exponent 10. 
So that will give us 1.280084. 5441963. Now, this value, ang denominator, money ang atong i-divide para makuha ang atong principal or present value. So, sa 25,000 divided by 1.280084, we will have 19,529.96. Therefore, the present value is 19,529.96. That's all for today, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have learned something and you may now enjoy your career.